You know, with all of these NCAA tournaments wrapping up and the baseball team starting conference play, it's really hard to think of the fall sports, but spring football is finally here. Even after their record-breaking year, the football team does have some question marks, including the health of their top running back. Here's updates Aaron Budd. Following the success of last season, Temple football takes to the field this month for a rigorous spring training regimen. One player who's no stranger to the heavy workload is sophomore running back Bernard Pierce. Whether it's his blazing speed or his ability to read the defense, Pierce has fans and opponents amazed. His game-changing performances led the Owls to a 9-4 record and a trip to their first bowl game in 30 years. After his breakout season, many are wondering what Pierce will do for his encore. It's real explosive, you know. Um, it's funny, the other practice, I was blocking for him. It's like so fast, like he gets out outside so quick. So it's really, we don't really need to block that much for him. He gets out so quick, he's real explosive, you know. This is an 18, 19 year old running back who is only, only stands to get better and this is the game crusher. Last season, Pierce rewrote the school record books with 16 touchdowns and over 1,300 rushing yards. However, those numbers could have been even higher as Pierce was sidelined with a shoulder injury late in the season. If he can manage to stay healthy this fall, he may be breaking his own records very soon. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's ready to go. Uh, he's healthy and Akeem Smith has had a good offseason program, so we're excited about him. And, uh, you know, there's a couple other tailbacks, obviously, that have helped us in, in Myron Ross coming in. So I think we've added some depth there and, and uh, have some guys that can carry the ball. The spring training is designed to ensure that when the lights go on in September, Pierce and the rest of the Owls will be ready. Until then, it's business as usual at Chodoff Field. Thanks, Aaron. Spring practice wraps up on April 17th with the annual Cherry and White game. The men's tennis team saw its three-game winning streak come to an end, losing to Duquesne 4-3. to The Cherry and White received strong performances from, from Philip Rams, who won his sixth straight singles match, and Dimitri Vazhunov. The Owls next take to the court against Hofstra Friday afternoon. On the women's side, the Owls found success in their matchup with the Dukes, taking the contest 6-1. to The Cherry and White had five victors in singles play, alone, to snap their three-game losing skid. The Owls return to competition against city rival St. Joe's Thursday afternoon. Moving on to In the Nest, where Tanya Cardoza has been named PhillyCollegeSports.com Coach of the Year. Cardoza led the Cherry and White to its seventh straight NCAA tournament as the Owls advanced to the second round for the first time since 2007. Track and field senior Brittany McRae was named a member of the Atlantic 10 Academic All-Conference team for maintaining a 3.42 GPA as a broadcast major. Mm, crazy. And junior Blake Collins and freshman Alex Tig earned gymnast and rookie of the week honors. Collins placed second in the all-around while Tig placed first in the uneven bars against William and Mary. With, with the men's, men's yeah. <laughs> the men's, it's my line, Joe. Come on. With okay. the men's basketball team winning the A10 championship and falling in the NCAA tournament's first round for the third year in a row, it's hard to forget some of the most memorable plays from this past season. Yeah, that's right. But thanks to editor Rob Sizowitz, let's take a peek at the top five plays from this past year. At number five is Raleigh Jefferson sneaking down the sidelines, slamming one home for the Owls in their season opener at Delaware. Michael Eric comes in at number four here with back-to-back -back jams against the Rams of Rhode Island, finishing with 19 points in the game. Lucky number three has a steal here from TJ DeLeo, coming down the court in transition, and boom goes the dynamite. Two points for the Temple Owls. Number two, who can forget this, is Juan Fernandez's 33-point performance against city rival Villanova. The Argentinian sharpshooter connected on seven of nine three-pointers to help lead the Owls to an upset of then third-ranked team in the country. Ah, uh, but number one, you guessed it, comes from the A-10 championship game. As the Cherry and White brought the trophy back to North Broad Street for the third straight year with a 56-52 victory over Richmond. That was a great sight. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Owl Sports Update. But remember, you can track the cherry and white anytime by logging on to owlsports.com. For Joe Polinski and the rest of the Owl Sports teams, I'm Colleen Shea. Thanks for watching.
and we'll see you next time.